session. Uh, we will start with the inaugural session and I would request the speakers uh, of the inaugural session starting with Sri Rajiv Arodaji to please come on dais. He is chairman of Rajasthan Small Industries Corporation. Uh, Dr. H.P. Singh, VSM, president of ICFA University to also please come on dais. Mr. S.Y. Siddhiki, executive advisor, Maruti Suzuki India Limited. Dr. G.K. Prabhu, president of Manipal University, Jaipur. Dr. Ekul Busrai, CEO of Ekul Busrai Consulting, Mr. Par Praveen Paranjpe, who chairs Fiki Rastan Subcommittee on HR and Skills, and Mr. Randir Vikram Singh, who is the co-chair of Fiki Rastan State Council. Mr. Uh, Naresh Kumar Thakral would be joining us in a while, but we will start the program uh, as per schedule. And uh, my name is Atul Sharma. I head Vicky Operations in Rajasthan. And a warm welcome once again to all the distinguished speakers and participating delegates at the 7th HR and Skill Summit. We are glad that we are able to meet physically after a gap of two years. The fifth and sixth edition of this summit were held virtually. and. We were all part, uh, witnessed during the COVID times also. We keep uh, all the sectors engaged, all the speakers engaged, all the stakeholders engaged. And uh, we have come out of it with a lot of learnings, which, we will, which will affect our organizations and the education system in times to come. And we, will, we have a very rich panel of speakers, and we will have a lot of learning to take away at the end of the day. So without taking any further time, I would request Mr. Randhir Vikram Singh, who is co-chair of Fiki Rastan State Council and CMD of Mandava Hotels, for his welcome remarks. Randhir ji, you might be knowing, is from the tourism industry. He is also the president of Indian Heritage Hotels Association and has been pursuing the cause of tourism development in Rajasthan for the last so many years. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Atul. A very good morning to everybody. I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to Mr. Rajiv Aroda, Chairman, Rajasthan Small Industries Corporation, Mr. Niresh Kumar Takral, Secretary, Skill, Employment and Entrepreneurship, Government of Rajasthan, Dr. H.P. Singh, VSM, President, the ICFA, AI University, Jaipur, Mr. S. V. Siddiqui, Executive Director, Maruti Suzuki, India Private Limited, sorry, Limited, Dr. G. K. Prabhu, President, Manipal University, Jaipur, Dr. Ikil Bas uh, Basrai, CEO, Akil Basrai Consultancy, Mr. Praveen Pranjpai, Chairman, Fiki Rajasthan, State, Com uh, State Committee on HR and Skill, Director, Honda Cars, India Private Limited, participating delegates, friends from the media. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you on the seventh edition of the HR Skills Summit, focusing on the most valuable assets for any institution, industry, society, or a nation as a whole, human resources. Globalization over the years has brought different perspectives and some new HR practices to Indian culture. Simultaneously, technology has significantly influenced the HR functioning across the industry. In recent years, HR has undergone dynamic shifts in its roles, functions, and overall impact in shaping organizations. Leaders today are moving away from the process mindset to more outcome-based mindset. In this digital era, and organizational competitiveness will depend on its talent readiness, skill sets, and how it will bring in diversity through prospective and organizational excellence. We have a great competitive advantage in terms of the democratic dividends, and we need to focus on initiatives towards translating the competitive advantages into competitive advantages through in creating appropriate skills sets desired not only within the state or nation but across the globe. Over 5 million people are expected to enter India's labor force over the next decade. New technologies such as artificial intelligence, advanced robotics, 3D printing and cloud computing among others are displacing existing jobs 
and, proce and work prog process, giving the ambition to drive the scale growth and development India needs to keep producing high quality talent, give this con uh, context the role of HR function and will need to re realign to contribute to greater purpose in sync with the larger vision of the country. The HR function needs to co continuously invest in talent development and build capabilities for future. Skilling and reskilling the workforces to respond to the changing job requirements in the critical era. A recent study suggests 65% of children starting school today will hold jobs that do not exist. Learnability will thus be one of the most essential skills required for the future employment. The COVID-19 pandemic has been an unprecedented crisis with economic consequences. Organizations are exploring whether the way of operating that have saved them well in the past will be fit for the future. HR has a vital role in shaping the way enterprises recruit and develop talent and take care of experiences to break away from the traditional form of overtaking models, the technology desired outcomes. I'm sure that the HR Skills Summit will dwell upon all these issues and suggest a way forward for the benefit of the human resources. We at FIKI are committed to work in close coordination with the government, industry, and academia in ensuring Rajasthan and country as a whole to be the bright spot. I'd like to congratulate and compliment Mr. Praveen Pranjpai for providing a platform for the effective collaborations between the three parties to develop new solutions for an inspired India. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Rightly said, we need to work towards uh, making our comparative advantage a competitive advantage, and HR function has a very important role to play in this. And moving uh, further, we have our next speaker, Mr. Parveen Paranjpe, who is Chairman of Iki Rastan Subcommittee on HR and Skills and Director of Honda Cars and Limited. Just a brief mention, Mr. Uh, Paranjpe is Senior Vice President and Director at Honda Cars India Limited and Trustee at the Board of Honda India Foundation. And uh, uh, during his tenure with Honda, he has effectively shouldered multiple responsibilities in manufacturing. He was head of manufacturing for 15 years, wherein he assumed responsibility of production, new product development, quality control, supply chain, and facility management. Some awards and accolades won by Honda due to his effective contribution are TPM Excellence Award of Japan, Best Manufacturer of the Year Award from Autocar, and Green Factory Award. So, uh, welcome you, sir, and over to you. A very good morning to ladies and gentlemen, and a warm welcome to Mr. Rajiv Arora, uh, Rajasthan Small Industries Corporation, and other uh, dignitaries on the dais in today's session. So it is in, indeed an honor to host the seventh edition of HR and Skill Summits, which has now been a successful flagship initiative of Fiki Rajasthan. Technology has been a boon in reshaping work since the first industrial revolution, which can be traced back to the 1700s, when manufacturing was pegged with the emergence of industries as mechanical technology powered the first factories. This revolution demolished guilds and replaced artisanal craftsmanship with assembly line production. In the 1800s, with the discovery of electricity, the electrical impetus made possible the division of labor and mass production. The third industrial revolution of the 1900s brought with it automated IT-enabled solutions, which streamlined the programmatic and work and limited the reliance on manual labor. Today, the fourth industrial revolution has augmented connectivity between cyber physical systems powered by exponential technologies and skilled data experts to create a fully 
interconnected society. As we are aware that the COVID pandemic has brought unprecedented disruption to education, threatening to affect an entire generation of future workers. Restrictions have also encouraged innovative approaches and solutions that could guide the road to be more inclusive of recovery. It is indeed necessary to look at the learnings of the past year and shed light on the skill set needed to build a resilient future or bring fifth industrial revolution. To achieve this objective, it is necessary for us to be aware that unless we have a strategy in place to prepare ourselves for the fourth upcoming transformation, the gains will not be widespread. It would also be pertinent to learn that how learning and development can work as a collaborator with internal talent mobility, which future skills that the workplace will need in times to come. How organization, academia, and the government should join forces, the rescaling revolution. A part of the solution which is the most tangible for the near future is development of education and skilling infrastructure across all sectors, corresponding to the emerging industrial setup. As the new job roles emanating out of upcoming disruptions are entrepreneur, scientific, creative, and emotional in nature, it is necessary for us to reform the education and skilling ecosystem. The ambitious program on Atmanirbhar Bharat also calls for making local products global. This has got many subsets like manufacturing competitiveness, import substitution, value for money, etc. All these cannot be achieved unless we have people with requisite skill sets available with us. Today we have a good mix of speakers from government, industry, academia, and I'm sure that collective efforts from all the stakeholders would help in achieving our shape, shared vision of Atmanirbhar Bharat with skilling as a major driver for this. Last but not the least, I would also like to thank Mr. Naresh Kumar Thakral, Secretary Skill Employment and Entrepreneurship, Government of Rajasthan. In fact, this has been one department that has been working quite proactively during the pandemic and whole team of RSLDC has been passionately driving the various activities, initiatives, and out-of-box ideas, creating examples for others to replicate. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. And uh, rightly said, if we have to realize our vision of uh, making India a $5 trillion economy, we need a smart organization and a smart organization can only be built with smart people. So uh, again, the human resource comes at the center stage of our developmental planning. And moving forward, I would request Dr. Akil Busrai, who is CEO of Akil Busrai Consulting, uh, for his remarks. He is a gold medalist from XLRI, uh, from where he did his MBA. He is a postgraduate in law and advanced diploma in training and development. Uh, besides PhD, he is currently pursuing his second PhD and a master's degree in anthropology. And he has a five decades experience in industry. He has worked with various HR roles with Unilever in Kenya and India with a, and was executive director HR Motorola for Asia Pacific countries. He has worked with Shell Malaysia as director human resource and managing director of Shell People Services Asia. And uh, his last corporate assignment was with IBM as uh, Executive Director of Human Resources, and he is currently CEO of Equal Busrai Consulting. So, over to you, sir. Good morning, uh, Mr. Randir Singh. Mr. Paranjpe, Mr. Rajiv Arora ji, Dr. Prabhu, Siddiqui Bhai, Dr. H.P. Singh and Atul ji, and fellow professionals. I also recognize here some very senior people, Colonel Lamba, good to see you sir, 
and a lot of young professionals. What I would like to do in my 10 minutes that I have been allotted is that talk about grassroots realities. I'm a practicing manager. So no theory about unprecedented COVID, what, what happened, what will happen and how should we tackle is what I'm going to share some of the thoughts and the research that we've done. One thing that is very obvious that in this two, two and a half years, uh, industry has gone through tremendous amount of pressure of lo loss of business, especially medium scale, small scale. And sometimes we forget medium scale, small scale in our uh, talk about big and rich companies, IBMs of this world and TCS, we forget that there are companies which struggled. And from now on, there will be tremendous pressure on line managers to recoup lost business, get market share, get productivity, get profits on board. So all this talk of empathy that we saw during COVID, which was required, it was done very well by industry, and they really rose up to the occasion, including taking care of <clears throat> medical requirements, ration requirements, and everything that was possible. But now on, there will be a tendency in some leaders that now let's get down to business. Let's get down to business means that let's take some hard decision. I'm not against hard decision, but not as a knee-jerk reaction. What, will, what one has to see is that the hard decisions are taken in the conjunction with continuity of some culture that has come in. Now, I'll only touch upon three points that I see that will affect industry as a whole in which all of us sitting in this hall will be impacted one way or the other. One, the neat organization boxes that we see in today's organization. Which box will do what work? Which box will report to which box? And I say box in terms of organization structure. In my opinion, those boxes will get blurred. In order to do more for less, there will be a demand to get more out of individual skill set than what they have been assigned. The luxury of having neat division of work and labor will be lost. And as a result of that, two boxes might do three boxes work. I'm using the word box deliberately because it is not that people's work content will increase, they have to work till 8 o'clock in the night. To do that extra half box work, can you hear me clearly? Okay. Uh, to do that extra half box work, it is not number of hours that is important, but what is important is the skill to do that extra work. And that skill will only come through retraining. So all the fancy training booklets that we have had in HR, and we in HR are famous for taking out this annual calendar, what program will be held, where, who will attend, what will be the uh, uh, participant level, who will teach, will be obsolete. You'll have to customize training to the need of the business. And that brings a big challenge to those of us who are handling people resources in any organization, that just knowing PAT, PBT, CAGR to the last decimal point is not going to be enough. HR people will have to understand what is ailing the business. What is the business head losing sleep over? What is she worried about? What is the competition doing? What type of technology is going to hit your business? And Siddiqui Bhai, your industry is under big challenge and you've gone through a big challenge in the COVID. With Tesla coming in, will the traditional car survive in the next 10 years? And if not, what is the company going to do to retrain people in advance to prepare them for changing time? You cannot just be an ostrich and say, take a manage kar lenge. Manage kar lenge is reactive. What will be required is proactiveness in advance anticipating problems and finding solution now rather than letting, letting the problem come up and finding a solution that time. And this will be a new requirement. Second, the use of technology is going to come in more and more. And that does not mean that we'll have to copy what the next company is doing. We'll have to identify what technology is suitable for our organization, our business. Now, many people will shy away from using technology for perceived fear that is expensive. 
दिस ऑल्सो बिग फॉर बिग कंपनीज ठीक है हम लोग के लिए ये सब नहीं होगा एंड स्पेशल इन द कॉन्टेक्स ऑफ राजस्थान वेर देर इज सच अ ट्रिमेंडस अमाउंट ऑफ मीडियम साइज कंपनी स्किल अवेलेबल विच आर डूइंग अमेजिंगली गुड वर्क not much known sir outside and dr arora uh, this is something important that this lot of work i have been fortunate to come to um, rajasthan and meet lot of professionals for years together a state like this will have to understand what technology is available and how it can be deployed now that doesn't mean creating unemployment it means redeploying people those of us who remember the 80s when computer came in I was very young that time when I was starting my career, and the union would agitate. Their computers will take away jobs, and they would go on a strike. We will not allow computerization. Today, if you take away the computer from the workplace for just two weeks, the union will go on strike. कि बिना कंप्यूटर के कैसे काम करेंगे? Why? Because the necessity of computer doesn't mean replacement of jobs. so new technology coming in but there is artificial intelligence machine learning blockchain name it it does not mean that jobs will be lost temporarily some jobs will disappear jobs which require discretion judgment will continue is a repetitive jobs which will disappear and get automated and now all this sounds like bad news and sad news but there are two big advantages that covid has given us and it's a tremendous advantage for future and sir i would put it in part of our agenda today to discuss these two topics one with working from home one myth that was there that women cannot do equal type of work like men they cannot travel they cannot do long hours they have this mother in law syndrome and they have family to look after so they are they are doing all right but in reality we can't trust them with bigger responsibility that was a myth and this is a reality data also shows that if you take the whole work population and put them in a triangle in four parts most of the women were in the lower part some women were there in the second layer hardly any in the third and hardly any one at the top layer the national data shows that of the top 100 com- ceos only 4.2% of the top c under ceos are women this pathetic is absolutely pathetic but having seen wfh period and seen that women did much better than men and data shows that there'll be more opportunity for women leaders to rise and our companies will have to take that opportunity now and make sure that this so called glass ceiling is shattered second advantage is the so far we have promoted people to leadership position based on gray hair or no hair If you are long time serving, automatically सब वो ऊपर जाते रहे हम दे बिकेम मैनेजर्स दे बिकेम डायरेक्टर्स फॉर्चुनेटली दैट विल बी ओवर यंगर पीपल विल टेक ओवर नॉट बिकॉज इज फैशनेबल बट द स्किल अर्लियर वॉज मैनेजरियल एक्सपीरियंस एंड दैट्स हाउ पीपल ग्रो अप इन द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन नाउ द न्यू स्किल विल बी टेक्नो मैनेजरियल स्किल द सीनियर मैनेजर्स विल नॉट ऑटोमेटिकली ग्रो अप इन टू हायर आर की and that's good news the younger manager will come up and data also shows that in last 30 years and it will accelerate further that average age of leadership has fallen down by 10.1 year iska matlab hai ki people who became department head or sit very senior leaders at age of 41 25 years ago are now becoming the same position at age of 30 now this is good news but the organization must be prepared in terms of recognizing talent and not tenure of service as a point to recognize leadership now these are all nice to say in a air condition hall like this and have a cup of chai afterwards ke maza aa gaya theek tha he spoke well she spoke well lunch was very good atul but at the end of the day so my submission to you mr arora sir that if we want to take something out of this conference like this at your level and the type of responsibility that you share in the state form a task force of some people from industry some from academia and some from your uh, expertise pool and let them work on a particular issue for at least 6 months 8 months and give a white paper to you i would suggest sir seriously that let's convert this type of 
thought process into some form of action point that can benefit. So I've got about eight seconds left, Atul. So I'll close here. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you. No, I, no. He asked me if I could comment on moonlighting. Uh, how do I put it very politely in a hall like this? That if you are married, and especially for the men, some of them are smiling already. If you are married and you have a lady friend, to put it very politely, is it right? Is it sanctioned? Answer is no. Moonlighting is very simple. You are cheating the company that has employed you. Period. There's no if, there's no but, there's no justification. You are hired to serve the company which pays you. Unless you tell the company that I'm selling pakoras in the evening while I'm working in the IT company. And the company says, okay, pakoras nothing to do with IT. That won't be moonlighting. But if you work for another company, Atul, that's completely illegal, immoral and unethical. Thank you, Dr. Busurai. And uh, as mentioned, uh, definitely we should have some structured mechanism to take this dialogue further. We will discuss it separately and see how we can proceed further on this. And our next speaker is Dr. G.K. Prabhu, who is president of Manipal University, Jaipur. And uh, he is associated with Manipal Group for over two decades in various academic and leadership positions. He did his bachelor's in electronics and communication engineering from BIET. Mysore University, M.Tech from Manipal Institute of Technology with first rank from Mangalore University and his Ph.D. from IIT Madras. And uh, he is uh, honored with his, uh, with the National Accolade Shri Sham Lal Saxena Memorial Award from National Academy of uh, Medical Sciences for his best published work in biomedical engineering in 2007. And as director uh, MIT Manipal, he has led several student-focused initiatives, including initiative the upgradation and modernization of MIT campus and infrastructure. So, over to you, sir. Good morning to each one of you. Sri Rajiv Aroraji other members uh, on the dais, other uh, fellow colleagues from the industry and academia, delegates. It's my pleasure to represent an academic institution in this forum. It's my pleasure here to be a part of the seventh edition of uh, HR and uh, Skills Summit organized by Fiki Rajasthan. It's a very nice forum that we have representation from the government, the industry, and from the university. And in this uh, inaugural session, along with the HP Singh C from ICFI University, I am also representing from the, the University of Manipal. So I will uh, talk about 10 minutes which is given here in the two parts. The first part is the HR challenges of initiatives of university itself because in that we are ourselves we can also consider as an industry the second part is also very important the important stakeholders for us is the students in case if an university is like us if we do much better the HR challenges of the other industries will also be met to some extent so that is the reason I thought that I will do it in two forms. First, let us see the important aspect or objective of an university. The first one is Adhyan. Adhyan is basically learning. Learning, it must become a lifelong learning. And today, because as everybody agrees, and my other speakers also told, the way in which the situation, technology, services are being changed is so fast that as a teacher, if I do not keep myself in pace, I will be outdated. So even for the teacher, 
the adhyayan is a very very important for a lifelong learning second very important point is adhyapan adhyapan is it is a dissemination of the knowledge for the students and when we do that and especially in the higher education there must be a change in the curriculum curriculum it has to be in such a way it must be a competent it should be a relevant it should be a flexible and there should be a fun in learning unfortunately these are the points that it is being losing the the sense in the higher education we need to quickly fix this we are fortunate that there is a new education policy nep 2020 addresses these issues but it is now it is left to an universities like us a teachers like us in the implementation otherwise policy will remain policy and the implementation if it goes wrong nothing can be changed this is the second part of it the third part of the university objective is samshodhan samshodhan is basically a research and innovation even in the recent speech prime minister modi ji also mentioned the innovation must be a part of life curiosity is something that uh, which uh, we need to nurture in the students every student every indian and that to every rajasthani because i have seen it curiosity is there you look at a child the kind of the questions he asks but unfortunately when he goes to the school and later he comes to the higher education unfortunately this curiosity concept is killed systematically we need to blame ourselves and today we appreciate the children and they evaluate the students on the best answers they write but all the industry people they know your skill is more on best questions that you raised we never evaluated all of you as my students the skilling of us questioning it need not be a questioning to your teacher you need to question yourself and look for such kind of an answer and that part is missing and basically this samshodhan is basically questioning ourselves and as an university when i do some kind of research creation of a new knowledge i must do something which is relevant to the society or to the community it is not that the research will do it for the sake of research finally it will sit in a particular rack that of course you may get publication you may get so many patents but how many of these patents are being implemented so that is something that which we have to do it so corona has uh, made us to think differently made us to change our gear difficult and we did it suddenly we went off on online because we are forced to do it it was not that easy for us the teachers like us for a 20 years for the natural habitat for the teachers us is classrooms i can speak when my students if by seeing my students natural habitat for me has gone i need to sit in front of the camera see myself and then i have to speak it's not that easy teachers did it it's not that easy for the students too because students for them is a society when they sit together with their friends and in some cases if he doesn't understand but still he will be very happy because the his friends also did not understand but that concept is not there so he is stressed himself and just like gandhi ji's three monkeys you know who they are we also have a three buttons in our virtual platform mute audio off video off <laughs> and you know what you are and i also do not know whether i have connected you or not but guys one one and a half year we did it students have performed very well the marks of the students during the the corona is much better than the school whether they have manipulated or whether i did not know the answer or whatever it is the performance has improved that means there is a concept of a self learning was introduced 
corona has come or gone now we are back into the university that is also a fear now that uh, are we going back again or we are talking about the digital till so to some extent digital concept is still there moving forward and when we talk about my teachers and that is the major challenges for me and the bottleneck because the teachers are conditioned themselves it is not i'm talking about teachers guys any human being conditioned for a long time it could be very difficult to, to change alt control delete is not that easy so but still that is something that which we are doing because the the skill set for the new teachers is entirely different today because he need a different it is not digital does not mean preparing a ppt and making on a powerpoint or a zoom no digital engagement it is something different because the attention span of the children have gone down but still you have to make some kind of an influential and impactful lectures and you must tell in a shorter period how it is so important for you all these kind of a new skills for the teachers are very much required and this is where we made some kind of an effect in the recruitment we started something called as a faculty recruitment seminar the new teacher will come to the class directly and the students i will inform guys he will be your teacher now you evaluate him so the teachers students are evaluating whether you would be a right teacher for me from tomorrow onwards or not they will give some kind of an input and this is somewhere and then we will evaluate its digital skills too and then we will recruit recruit is the one part my dear friends once he is there any teacher now we have to induct to the culture of the university and because each university has his own culture own vision and he must be amalgamated together for which there will be a strong induction program and there is a long cultural sensitivity which we will provide the kind of the student profile that we have for which the teachers need to do it and all those things it has to go there is another part which is very important which i read in uh, mother teresa's book and it is written that everybody will go to the bed hungry hungry is not that literal meaning of hungry hungry is a lack of appreciation people do not get the uh, appreciation and it is true you just see even if you have done in good as a student there is no appreciation people will feel bad so we have done a lot of other appreciation concept whether it is a performance based evaluation or recently sir there is something which we have done it a nine box concept which is which is very good and this is the first ever university we thought we will introduce this nine box nine box for few of the students i'll tell you it is not only your performance there is a measure that we can do your potential where you want to be and as my uh, the earlier speaker we said if you understand a little bit about your potential and a performance together put it in a matrix and put that in which box that you feel and depending upon that there would be some kind of an appreciation need to be given and even in the performance management we will tell how much you wanted to do it this year in the academics in the research and the administration look for that you decide yourself and accordingly i will evaluate you at the end so there will be no surprises okay so this is something that which we wanted to do and the another very interesting point guys academic leadership is something which is a very rare quality and rare breed when i got my first administration i did not know anything about the management a people management or a financial management strategic development and communication skills i never know how to talk to the the peers how to talk to the other universities how to talk to the industry persons so all those kind of a new skills are because we haven't done mbas and nobody taught us so this is the reason we have developed a a complete training system within the university which is called as a smile and is a, a simulated an integrated manipal integrated leadership engagement a nine months long engagement if somebody wants to be in the administration it is not a compulsion 
which we ourselves develop and do that. And the last one point that I would like to talk about uh, my student because you are the, the next HR uh, inputs for the industry. Truly, guys, we also do not know at the end of the four years what kind of a job that you are getting, what kind of a skill set is required for you. Although we do all this kind of a curriculum, conclave, the dream curriculum, everything that we will do, but we do not know, truly speaking. Okay, so, but there are three or four parameters are very, very important. The one important point is the student or whoever comes out from the education institution has the ability to learn by themselves. That is a self-learning is a very, very important. Many of the students say that today is my examination, I will close the book, I will sell that book for the second and my job is done. No, because you need to learn a lot, self-learning. The second very important point is the collaboration skills. Once if you are in a position to collaborate, an electrical engineer collaborates with an automobile, an automobile engineer collaborates with the computer science. A computer science will collaborate with the BBA. A BBA will collaborate with the journalism. A journalism will collaborate on hospitality. If this collaboration comes, you will be a successful. Because tomorrow in the industry, you are not talking to your own disciplines. You are talking to the other. So collaboration is a very, collaboration and networking is a very, very important point. And the third one is questioning yourself questioning the new thought and having the creativity. Creativity and the innovation is the only one thing it makes you different. So these are the few things which is very important. Unfortunately, in the, the standard classrooms or inside the classrooms, I cannot teach it very structurally. That is the reason the universities like us created a lot of student clubs, which will be managed and organized and uh, run by the students. And doing that, they will create a lot of confidence and move forward. So I'll conclude here because uh, challenges at the universities, one is the faculty, which we need to change the gear. The another is the uh, students, is a new generation students, their expectations are also very high and their skill sets are also need to be changed to some extent we are also not aware. And we have to talk to the industry people in a constant motive and they will be with us and providing some of the skills which we are not there. Because some of these things even for us is an out of syllabus. Whether it is in because we haven't run an industry, we do not visit the industry very frequently. So that is the way we have introduced a concept which is called as a, a professor of practice or as an adjunct faculty members. Many of these industry people keep coming, visiting and talking. Some of these topics may not be there for the examination immediately, but it will be very useful and life skills for you. So thank you very much, uh, my dear friends. I truly enjoyed loving you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Prabhu. And uh, thanks for sharing the perspective of university and the HR challenges that are there with the academic institutions also. Now we have our next speaker, Mr. S.Y. Siddiqui, who is Executive Advisor of Maruti Suzuki India Limited. And uh, he joined Maruti Suzuki in 2003. He is also working directly with the Managing Director for Future Business Strategy and People Challenges 2020 and beyond. And also heading Maruti Suzuki Real Reality vert Business Vertical. A postgraduate in HRM, Mr. Siddiqui has a career track of around 40 years in the HR and business roles of good Indian corporates as well as MNCs widely traveled. He has handled global and multi-culture HR issues in highly competitive business environment in India and Europe. And he has been a regular speaker at our HR forums. So welcome you, sir, and over to you. Thank you, Atulji. Because of you, we are here, so compliments. Respected Mr. Rajiv Arora, eminent uh, personalities on the dais, ladies and gentlemen, very good morning. I was looking at uh, your participation, very reserved, very quiet. So I thought maybe a little low on energy, right? I had one curiosity, all of you sitting here, how many cars Maruti make every year? Anybody who may like to guess, plus minus 5% will be fine. And if you guess right, next time you buy a Maruti car, I'll give you a very special hefty discount. 
whoever comes close to what we make. How many cars Maruti make every year? Yes, please. 20 lakhs. Anybody else? Any other guesses? There are no minus marks for guessing. So we are heading towards 20, but because of COVID, we are hanging around 18 lakhs. And uh, when we are looking at 18 lakhs, we think that we are pushed by almost three years because we should have done this 2020 uh, to reach 2 million. And when Akhil Bhai was talking about this uh, big, big impact of COVID, obviously it has been a huge impact globally, uh, different kind of uh, maybe negative, uh, you can say quotient on different sectors or for aviation and uh, maybe retail business, maybe hospitality got very badly hit. Pharmaceutical did extremely well, but then okay, manufacturing, auto and this thing also got badly impacted. When I was looking at this context, what Atalji has talked about, this uh, seventh uh, kind of, you know, uh, HR and skill summit, I was looking at, at board level at Maruti, how do we define the business environment today? And we are looking at five key factors there. One, we are looking at, uh, as Akil Bhai all think, post-COVID, we are all hustling and bustling for reboot and recovery at this point of time. That is a very common thing which is happening in industry. And one change, people well-being and people safety, people health has suddenly become a top priority for top leadership, every company, which was not the case earlier. Second, obviously digital era is coming in, that boom, that disruption, that potential, that potential of reach, speed, and maybe a kind of responsiveness is what we are talking of for digital. Digital doesn't mean, uh, you know, sacrificing manpower per se. That's a wrong understanding. Maybe we are looking at earlier globalization of business, very intense competition. Now we are looking at a process of reverse globalization because we don't want to be dependent on China, what we saw in the last three years. So we would like to do everything here in India, reverse globalization. Microchips shortage, semiconductors, all car industries suffering badly. Maruti, we do roughly about 175,000 cars a month. We are restricted to 120 because we don't have the chips. So chips are used in maybe medical devices, mobile phones, and all, where all, but capacity globally is the same. So all that kind of issues are there when we are looking at this need for microchips to be invested within the country. Government is helping us big way. So it's basically reverse loop like this. Fourth point, perhaps, we are looking at maybe global clues for a, for a worldwide recession. And uh, yesterday only IMF was saying that perhaps the possibility is increasing of uh, lower and lower growth, higher energy and higher interest costs and food prices, Ukraine and Russia war and all that. So we may get into a kind of a possible potential recession 2023. And maybe we are looking at an environment, business environment, which has got volatility and which has got turbulence. Just like we go to flight, we go to air pockets and then plane is a little unstable for 5, 7, 10 minutes. We are going to do business now and define talent strategy in that turbulence, in that volatility. And possibly perhaps when I look at uh, you know, future people challenges, then again perhaps I am looking at five different factors. One is that perhaps the nature of work is changing, we all have known, discussed and other speakers have talked about. Workplace is also changing, work from home or hybrid, work from office, work from factory. In our case, factory, office, home, Maruti is working with four generations of people. So all that mix up is happening. So there is a possible impact on the culture, engagement. We are looking at also the change in workforce. So younger people are coming in, older people are moving out, in our case 40 years maybe the aging company and we recently celebrated 40 years of Maruti and the first function was kicked off by none other than the Honorable Prime Minister in Gujarat. So very proud, he talked very uh, rich about Maruti, very rich about the relationship with Suzuki last 40 years. But this workforce is changing and there's also temp workers coming in, gig workforce is coming in. So we'll have to rejig our HR processes and policies to accommodate all kinds of people working for the same purpose, same direction. And then perhaps fourth, we heard about great resignations in US. But in India, we are talking of great realization. People are reassessing what company and what work I should entertain. Not every company and every kind of work, rat race, I would like to be part of. I would like to give meaning to my life, to my family. That realization is coming in, in India. So people may or may not continue certain jobs 
at any cost. And last but not the least, as I said earlier, all these four challenges will result into the fifth challenge, that our work culture may become agriculture. We may or may not be able to understand. We may state this is the work culture of my company, but the actual work culture may be something different which can shock people when they come into play. And somewhere perhaps it may impact the leadership DNA also. And a lot of times in the last so many years, three years, maybe COVID and all this pandemic, we have been hearing something, the emerging new normal. New normal. What is new normal? In our thinking, in our analysis, new normal is having three things. Some part of our previous styles and the memory and the work culture, leadership style, we may have to drop completely. So some old skills, as Dr. Prabhu was saying, will be eliminated, completely dropped, gone. That is part A of the emerging new normal. Part B is that some portion of us, of our habits, of our working styles, may get altered or restructured. So some new skill sets may come in. The work culture may become maybe based on hybrid model, largely. So something which we may have to change or rejig or restructure. And third is that what totally new we will need to add. And there this capability of adjusting, adapting and adopting effectively is going to come into play, which will be the most difficult. But that change nobody can stop. That's what, what our thinking is. Also, four major global trends which we have observed, and at Maruti's board level, we have discussed that loud and clear, that how we are going to get impacted by those four global major trends. One, purpose over process will dominate. Process will get outdated, and purpose will become, and purposeful leadership will become very critical. So you lead for a purpose. You bring people into the company for a purpose, for a common mutual goal. That will be the group. That one shift is happening in a very so shared purpose, in my thinking, will become very critical. Second, we have talked about, many of our earlier speakers have talked about, is skilling and reskilling and reskilling for future. That should be the kind of basic trend we should get accustomed to. Earlier, talent was valued by industry. This guy is talented, let's hire him. Now, people will value learning capacity, not talent. What talent I had 40 years back will have no relevance. If I have the capability to relearn, upskill, I'll be valued in industry based on that capacity. Continuous learning capacity. And maybe, as I said, reskilling not just once, but over and over again as we go along in this business life. Third one is very, very simple to understand, but most difficult. Don't stand still. Just like a treadmill situation, if you stand, you fall. That's the kind of trend which we are looking at. And kind of continual transformation will be a challenge. Agility, perhaps, scalability, these competencies will come handy for people. And last but not the least, I talk about it even before COVID, is that we must have the capability to selectively delete the past. Because if you don't clear the, all the kachala here, you will not be able to acquire new thinking, new skills, new adaptability. And there perhaps it is extremely, extremely critical that we should have this ability to. What do we do? We have a polythene, 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 we have a We don't delete. But we'll have to learn this capability of selectively deleting the past. Maybe when we look at the business strategy, and uh, in our case, perhaps uh, Japanese, long years, I have been earlier Toyota, 10 years now with Suzuki, 20 years, almost 30 years with the Japanese. What is the difference between Indian and Japanese? Aap logo sabhi ko mere khayal se pata hoga. Kya difference hai hum logo hai? Quick responses. Very focused, punctual, disciplined, passion. Commitment. हमारे हिसाब से एक बड़ा मेजर डिफरेंस है जो आप लोग ऑब्जर्व नहीं कर रहे हैं इंडियन तो जापानीज के बीच में टेक्नोलॉजी 90% स्किल लेट मी टेल यू बिकॉज़ ऑफ दिस टाइम कंस्ट्रेंट वन बिग डिफरेंस आई हैव सीन वी आर इमोशनल बम्प्स इंडियंस वेरी इमोशनल जापानीज आर डिसपैशनेट नो इमोशंस एंड आई टेल यू वन वेरी क्विक स्टोरी वन वेरी रिच जापानीज लॉयर इन इन टोक्यो वन डे ही थॉट ओके लेट मी जस्ट टेक टाइम ऑफ फ्रॉम वर्क आई विल गो फॉर अ ड्राइव इन माई लिमोजिन शॉफर ड्रिवन 
So he was driving and saw next to the road two Japanese eating grass on the lawns there. So he got a little curious, so he stopped his car, went there, asked, what happened? Why are you eating grass? They said, last 15 days, no job. Last 10 days, no money. Last 3 days, no food. So we are satisfying our tummy by eating grass. So he said, okay, 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 fine. Come in my car, today evening I will take you out for dinner. So that under the tree, our wife, eh, wife also, all four of you, please come in my car. Big car, no problem. So in the car, those poor hungry Japanese were saying, sir, you are just like God. So he, lawyer said, don't, don't bother on that. Let us not get into those formalities. <laughs> no, no, sir, not like God. You are actually God for us. He says, no, no, forget about it. Uh, I said, I'll take you out for dinner today. The grass at my farmhouse is one meter tall. <laughs> Absolutely dispassionate. How do we do this? We will go to Tokyo. 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 We will go to the hotel. We will go to the meeting. We will go to the dinner. Ke liye our Japanese colleagues, when India comes, they don't call back. Now India has reached, now we are going to go to Mr. Siddiqui, 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 we are going to go to Mr. Totally dispassionate. And one of my colleagues who was the Joint Managing Director, Mr. Hirofumi Nagao, he was going back for maybe four or five days trip to Japan. So I bought a small gift for his wife, I asked my wife, we said, yeah, Nagawasan, ye aap unko, apni wife ko dena. Kata, yeah, but boss, boss, I will not meet my wife. I said, yeah, you are going to Japan. You are working here for five years. You will not meet your wife. He said, no, no, because that is out of my route, travel route, you know. So as per policy, I will go to Suzuki head office and then have meetings and then come back here. Fantastic. Hum log aisa kar lehen, ghar mein IR problem khada ho jayega, nahin? Next time you will be debarred to enter any such, uh, in, in that sense, maybe perhaps when I look at a larger framework, business strategy, perhaps when we are looking at skilling, I think we'll have to look at the softer aspects of preparing India as a competitive kind of country compared to China and others and ensure that all these investments, divestments from China should really come into our capability. So both technical side, management side and on the softer side, behavioral side, Maybe HR can play that big role in my thinking. They can look at driving change and transformation if I reimagine the role of HR in future, strategic one. Maybe rejig, rethink the talent strategy aligned to the new normal, not the old habits. And we can look at HR tech where we can lead to get maybe HR analytics, HR forecasting. 2010 in Maruti, in one of the board presentations I have shared, that 45% of the top leadership will reach superannuation, including me, 2018. That's what maybe eight years earlier we warned our company that we need to do the succession and we need to do for the next phase of 40 years for Maruti to be prepared well, 2010, maybe eight years in advance. Somewhere that capability through HR tech. We are looking at capability building, scaling, all I said also on the softer side, on the technical side, management side, maybe aligned to the new business order. Dr. Ram Charan has talked about one principle, one theory, very famous theory, 98 by 2. Any one of you aware of what is 98 by 2? Professor Ram Charan's theory, very famous. He talked of this theory to our suppliers conference in Dubai five, six years back, almost 600 CEOs, and nobody was able to understand what this theory is talking about. Till next 30, 40 minutes that we were really taken aback by his research and the thinking on the subject. What was this theory of 98 by 3? Two. Anybody? By uh, any chance? No idea. So we must have these ideas. That, that's what is the purpose of talking. So he says that every company, it is 2% of the people who influence and drive the performance and behavior of the balance, 98% people of that company. It is only 2% of the people in every case. And I was very calculating very fast in Dubai, trying to ascertain. And Maruti also is exactly 2% of the people who influence the behavior and performance of the balance 98% people of the company. And I think somewhere, perhaps that kind of skilling, capability building aligned to the new business order is what I am looking at. Maybe we are looking at uh, HR as a custodian of ethics, governance, very badly required in the next 10, 15, 20 years. What we do should be right. And in my thinking, a, a human resource leader should be first a good human being, 
before he becomes a strategic HR leader somewhere. That will be very, very critical as, as we have seen part of maybe my last 40 years. And perhaps when we look at leadership, I was talking about new DNA, I think HR will have to lead that development of what is this new DNA of leadership. New DNA of leadership, Bhagil Bhai talked of empathy, yes, compassionate, but before that, leader should be authentic leader, who should lead by example, people should be admiring that person, walking the talk. That will require a lot of self-discipline. And I think I, I refer our Japanese guys as very modest, very simple and walk the talk kind of people. And maybe we are looking at, uh, within this perspective, listening leadership, capability for us to listen to our people. Leaders always want to talk, talk, talk. We will have to reverse that capability. Capability to listen to people. And in one of the NHRD and National HRD Network, I think uh, seminars way back in uh, Delhi, when I was heading NHRD, and I was looking at one evening this big 200 people crowd and very young people, and one youngster wanted to say something. He was not getting the space. Then I somehow identified him and asked him to have the mic and say, he says, Mr. Siddiqui, this seminar on compensation and benefits, I think as people grow in senior positions, their compensation should be reduced. And the younger ones who are now coming in, they should be given more compensation. So I asked him, I was very curious, that what is your rationale for this recommendation? He says, because the younger ones will need to get married, will have children, will buy cars. So they need money more, not you people. You people are already settled. Quite amazing. You should listen to people for new perspectives. And somewhere that will help moving forward. And I think when I look at future, when I look at our country, the kind of competitive uh, capability, we have everything. If we need something is an eco environment where perhaps skilling will be one small enabler. There perhaps as uh, other speakers were saying, maybe all of us in industry, academia, should first take the initiative. Then there could be a government support. But I don't think we should really expect government to do everything for us. So that's what my thinking, very privileged to be here. And I wish you all the best that you people grow in skills next 10 years when we'll be retired. And maybe when you will be doing well, you will be definitely deciding to buy cars. At that point of time, please buy only Maruti cars. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Siddiqui. And uh, it has always been a pleasure listening to your thoughts. And uh, moving forward, uh, our next speaker is Dr. H.P. Singh, VSM and President of uh, the ICFA University, Jaipur. And uh, he began his professional career as electrical engineering and officer in Indian Navy and rose to become Commodore uh, in service hierarchy during his 31-year-long stint in defense. He did some of the most coveted and challenging appointments. He was awarded Chief of Naval Staff Commendation for his performance on board aircraft career and Presidential Award Vishes Seva Medal for his distinguished service to the nation. And uh, Professor Singh in 2012 uh, selected as Director Commercial Project and Research of the Instrumentation Limited, a public sector undertaking at Quota wherein uh, he was instrumental in turning around the performance of the enterprise and was nominated as best director projects. He later graced the position of chief executive officer of Pudar Group of Education Institutions in Rajasthan, followed by his appointment as pro vice chancellor at Suresh Gyanvihar University, Jaipur. During his stint as vice chancellor ICFI uh, University, Himachal Pradesh, he earned numerous uh, accolades, including academic and research excellence award in 2019 and the icons of Himachal Pradesh 21 uh, award from the Honorable Chief Minister of Himachal Pradesh. We welcome you, sir, and over to you. Sri Rajiv Aroraji, all distinguished speakers, sitting on the dais, organizing committee, FIKI, subcommittee, HR and skills, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and greetings to you all. A lot has already been spoken about the industry, Maruti, the university, 
by Dr. Prabhu. So I will like to address the theme of the FIKI that is positioning Rajasthan as the human capital factory. I think it's a very apt topic and uh, there is a lot of potential in the state of Rajasthan to become human capital factory like the way China has become the manufacturing factory. India and state of Rajasthan also can become a human capital factory. I have some viewpoints which I would like to put forward. But before that, I'd like to thank Fiki for making me a member of today's deliberations. This is the first time that IKFI University is participating in the Fiki's deliberations. And I can assure you that we will be part of you now henceforth and we are going to stay here. Now, some points that I want to share to prove that Rajasthan state can actually become human capital factory and there are some suggestions, there are some aspects that I would like to make some suggestions and all. First of all, Rajasthan has got the highest footfall of universities in the country. Can somebody tell me how many universities are there in state of Rajasthan? 52 are only the private universities. It is much more than that. So you will be happy to know that our state of Rajasthan has got the highest number of universities in the country. There are 85 universities. Out of, which, out of which 52 are the private universities alone. Now you look at, look at the kind of footfall that the universities and higher education institutions have in the state of Rajasthan. Now, I think just in time, we were talking about state of Rajasthan and secretary uh, entrepreneurship and the skill development of government of Rajasthan is here. Welcome, sir. Now, with that kind of universities and higher education system in the state of Rajasthan, there is no reason as to why the human capital cannot be built. I would say human capital, firstly human resources, and then making those human resources put to the economic activity to have the financial outcomes. So therefore, how to develop the human resources in the state of Rajasthan, that is one of the questions. So, the universities, higher education institutions are the ones where you develop this. You know, the uh, human resources, they come out of it whether engineers, chartered accountants, commerce graduates or uh, doctors, whatever you call it. That number we need to look at now is how much are we, how, how, how is the qualitative aspects in our universities? Though the number is 85, but we find that not many universities are in the top NIRF ranking, that is National Institution Framework ranking. Not many universities are there in that, nor are many universities graded, you know, high by NAC. So therefore, qualitative aspects are something that we need to pay attention to. That is something lacking in most of the institutions. Also. The gross enrollment ratio in the country is about 28.3 uh, in the higher education. But in the state of Rajasthan, despite 85 universities, it is only 23. That means lower than, lower than the national average. So there is a need to improve the gross enrollment ratio in our higher education institutions. Other thing is that now the national education policy has been promulgated it is under implementation. So if all the institutions and universities implement NEP seriously in later in spirit, then the, all these qualitative aspects also will be taken care of. It's very important because uh, NEP has been made after a lot of you know, discussions, deliberations, and has come out after 32 years. So whatever is contained in that, if it is implemented properly, then definitely the qualitative aspects also will be addressed. 
Second thing that I want to say about the human capital is that all of us in the industry, in the universities, need to realize the impact of Industry 4.0. It is a reality now. The technologies like artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, Internet of Things, cyber security, virtual reality, augmented reality, blockchain, all these technologies are going to be there for the next decade and they are going to influence the business environment, business processes. So we need to prepare our workforce, our human resources based on these requirements of these technologies because they are going to impact the business environment that is existing. Third thing is that we need to develop skills and competencies in our manpower. 21st century human skills which are lacking. We find that there are no problems as far as the jobs are concerned. But the students or the workforce is not being absorbed because those skills of 21st century and competencies are not available as per the World Economic Survey of 2020 and 21. Only one engineer out of five passing out is employable. Only one out of ten graduates passing out are employable, is employable. That is the kind of situation because the students have not developed those 21st century skills that are required by the industry and the corporate sector. That is very, very important. We need to take into account that we need to do that. Now, that is why the curriculum, as was also brought out by Dr. Prabhu, that our curriculum, our pedagogies, our curriculum has to be state of art. Our pedagogies have to be innovative. Gone are the days when we just had unilateral, you know, one-way lecture. You go in the class, I used to have a teacher, I mean, you know, come in the class, whether you're understanding or not understanding, you do it on the board and go away. That's not the time. Now we need to do much more because students have access to all the information that is available to you. You need to make sure that they develop those skills which are required by the industry. That is where we have been lacking. So in this context, I would like to inform the forum that the UGC in the recent past have promulgated two policy letters which are important. One is they are saying that the universities can go to industry, can go to IT sector, prepare modules along with the industry, assign credits to these modules. That means if the modules are done by the students, they will earn credits as part of their you know, degree. And if those modules are prepared with the IT industry, then definitely those skills that are required, the competencies that are required by the students would definitely be addressed suitably. That is one. Second is also, like uh, Dr. Prabhu also had mentioned about it, another policy which has been promulgated by UGC is that you can employ industry people as professors. It is called professors in practice. And I can tell you with pride that in the ICFA University, we have employed three professors from industry already. And those professors are in the domain of marketing, finance, and HR. And they have already completed six months, and now they are starting with the new semester. Now, these people have spent a lot of time in the industry, corporate sector, and they are also entrepreneur and all. So we have selected them. You used to say that you can, uh, you can appoint them as professors, and they can be given a time of one year, which can be extended to three years. And this is permitted by UGC. So we are doing it, ICFA University is doing. I think with this, what will happen is that the professors who are coming from industry, they will bring to bear those skills which are lacking in the universities and higher education institutions. So I think these measures of UGC, if they are implemented properly, are definitely going to help the universities, going to help the students in coming up with those skills and competencies which are required by the industry. Talking about some, something I would like to also mention about, you know, the retention of personnel. Like Dr. Prabhu mentioned that, you know, it's a big, huge challenge to recruit faculties and to retain them and to continue with them. I think the SR has got a huge role to play in retaining the personnel. I would like to just mention, it may be out of context, but I would say, that the ICFI University during the pandemic 
two and a half years, paid full salaries to all the employees in all the universities without any cut. But I know there are many universities, large institutions, where there was a deduction of salary. It didn't happen. The HR looked after it. It was empathetic and considerate. And you would find that the attrition rate of faculties in a five university is minimal. All those who are the faculties are there, they continue to operate in the university and they give out. So the HR has got a huge role in ensuring that the continuity of the manpower, retention of the manpower is ensured. Also, I think the companies need to invest a lot in HR, in, in, in the employees. Because if you don't invest in employees, then those skilling, reskilling, you know, the kind of expertise, continuous education, that will not happen. That will only happen when you invest in human resources, make sure that your employees, they continue to go through the continue. There was some kind of uh, chat between CFO and CEO of Maruti Suzuki, no, I don't know, some other company, where the CFO, who is financial person, he looks at finances. So he says, sir, if you educate these people, and after that, if they leave, then what do we do? That will be all expenditure, it is not investment. Then the CEO says, and suppose we don't educate them, suppose we don't skill them, and they continue to stay, then what? So the difference is, you continue kind of, you know, keeping your human resource update, your employees continue with the education, continue your education, then I'm sure you will never lose out. Because the skilling, reskilling, all, if, if, the, if the emphasis is on the manpower, on the resources of the employees, I'm sure they will never let you down. So I think for retention of employees in the workforce, it is important that we skill them. You have provision of continuous education, and these things will definitely work. Two more things before I close is that we need to have a creative work environment in our places. We must promote creativity. Creativity inspires innovation. Now, if you do not have open kind of thing in your company and you don't promote that openness, you will find that, that innovation missing, that kind of creativity missing. So therefore, we should create work culture and environment which is creative. That's very important. Also, we should have diverse workforce in the sense that it has been, McKinsey has done some research where it says that where there's a diverse workforce, the financial output is almost 25% high. That means if you take into account the gender, dis, you know, uh, diversion, all, and people coming from different backgrounds, they bring different competencies to the table, and you have inclusion of the equity and diversity into account, I'm sure the place will really prosper and flourish. These were few ideas I thought I would put forward to say that Rajasthan has got a lot of potential to become human capital, and it should become, because we are talking about Skill India, the country is talking about Skill India, why not Rajasthan? Rajasthan has got that potential, I'm sure in the years to come, with all of you being there for the future of this country, state, uh, these things will actually become reality. Thank you very much. Thank you for hearing patiently. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Singh. And uh, in fact, rightly said, we should have more diversity uh, and inclusion at our workforce level. And uh, moving forward, we have with us uh, Mr. Naresh Kumar Thakral, who is Secretary Skill, Employment and Entrepreneurship, Government of Rajasthan. In fact, he is also Secretary Finance, Expenditure and Secretary Sports. And he is a 2006 batch IAS officer. He has served as a Special Secretary, uh, Finance Expenditure, Mission Director of National Health Mission and uh, Director of Public Services. And uh, he has been Collector and District Magistrate of Seeker and Bundi. We welcome you, sir, and over to you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Honorable Rajiv Aroda sir, respected Randhir Vikram Singh ji, Shri Praveen Paranjapai ji, Dr. Rakil ji, Dr. G.K. Prabhu sir, Mr. Siddiqui ji, 
distinguished dignitary on dais and audience before me. First of all, I would like to convey my regards and thanks to Atulji for inviting me on this uh, auspicious occasion and giving me an opportunity to interact with all of you. As we all of know, Rajasthan has approximate 26 percent of youth population, of uh, total population approximate 8 crore. So it is uh, around 2 crore of youth population, which is uh, a great uh, human resource for us. It is a challenge for us and it is an opportunity, f opportunity for us how we provide opportunity for them. As we all know, our academic uh, education does not make them adequately employable. Even some data shows that only 8% of engineering graduates are employable. It is the need of our to make youth skilled multidimensionally and engage them in productive works. Youth skills needs to be uh, skilling, reskilling and upskilling to respond to this uh, multidisciplinary uh, change in job requirement as all uh, my previous uh, speaker have put uh, before us. Therefore, it is necessary that government and industry have to collectively invest in the development of new learners by improving education and training system and focus on providing relevant skills for the futuristic jobs. It will lead to an increase in both efficiency and productivity and immensely contribute in enhanced state GDP. As far as state uh, government uh, aspect is concerned, Rajasthan has been a pioneer in skill related intervention and promoting uh, employment and entrepreneurship. Department of skill of the state is meeting the challenge through designing more effective livelihood promotion strategies, building capacities of existing livelihood intervention agencies and expand and improve accessibility of their services. In Rajasthan, Rajasthan Skill and Livelihood Development Corporation, generally known as RSLDC, is the nodal agency for state skill development mission and for implementation of skill training mandate of the government. It has established skill training mechanism by involving training partner agencies to execute the training programs. Till date, more than 5 lakhs youths have been trained in various sectors through MPanel training partners. RAST, RSLDC has more than 500 MPanel training partners who have joined Rajasthan from across the country. And they are imparting short term training courses, generally 3 4 month courses, as per the need, which are suitable for industry engagements. We are also conducting sector-wise skill gap assessment and skill development impact analysis study in Rajasthan to evaluate demand and skill and placement and at matching candidate number in skill categories with potential for placement in the state. RSLDC has initiated uh, a new initiative. Till now we were uh, imparting training through our training partners uh, as per uh, government procedure. Now as a new initiative which is called RTD, Recruit, Train, Deploy mod model. In this uh, model, uh, in RTD model to involve big or medium size industries for providing training as per their skill set demand in their 
available premises and provide industry specific training to unemployed and underemployed youth the outcome of this model is development of workforce with relevant and precise skill set required by the industry training in industry relevant and advanced skills till date rsldc has signed mou agreement with association of healthcare uh, providers ecom express limited skill council for green jobs wipro g healthcare uh, private limited we are looking uh, forward to for more uh, industrial and uh, corporate houses for this initiative apart from this uh, rsldc the another uh, uh, vertical which we have is itis uh, in rajasthan we have uh, uh, around uh, 1789 itis out of which 1500 are private itis and 289 are government which is the second largest number of iti in india the government iti also have the institute management committees imc and the committee is chaired by the industry representative there are more than 100 imcs in the state which are independent to identify and run suitably co courses in respective itis such imcs are managed by industries like honda car india limited jk cement limited chambal fertilizer ircon international limited nuclear power corporation of india jk tire and industries and many more such industries itis have also entered into mou with various uh, companies industry for training also currently ongoing trainings are with pedelite industry kerens uh, foundation toyota kirloskar motor private limited upvc window and uh, door manufacturing association samsung india electronics private limited caterpillar honda motorcycle and uh, scooter india, india private limited and many more in uh, rajasthan we have uh, one uh, skill university also mm -hmm. this uh, state uh, government skill university was established in in 2017 and uh, till date it has affiliated more than 80 multi sectoral institute for vocational uh, courses uh, to way forward the uh, current skill ecosystem needs to be reengineered to cater to the evolving growth and demand of uh, industry we are focusing on new age technology such as artificial intelligence robotics bionics the internet of things 3d printing and biotechnologies which build on and amplify one another state government has also declared its uh, startup uh, policy for young entrepreneur we are doing our best to reinvest our reinvent our training strategies to meet the requirement of the future i hope uh, for the detailed and purposeful deliberation during uh, the full day ses uh, session of this uh, summit i wish you all a great success thank you thank you very much thank you sir in fact uh, later during the day we will have case study presentation from some of our members who have adopted itis and uh, will share how they have transformed these itis and just before you came there was a mention from mr paranjpe that this uh, rsldc has been one department which has worked tirelessly during the pandemic also to engage the migrant workers which had come back and there was a shortage due to migration of workers from here and have to the extent possible effectively dealt with the situation now our next speaker and guest of honor uh, shri rajiv aroda ji who is chairman of rajasthan small industries corporation and he is also been recently uh, appointed as uh, chairman of rajasthan export promotion council and in fact i read somewhere sir that you have set an ambitious target to double the exports from rajasthan in times to come and uh, 
many of you might be knowing that he is himself a very successful uh, entrepreneur founder and promoter of amrapalli group of companies amrapalli museum gurukul school of design and the we need a separate session to read the detailed uh, profile of sir but we welcome you sir and it's an honor to have you amongst us look forward to hearing from you sir thank you atul uh, namaskar mm, i am really thankful to fiki for inviting me for the 7th hr skill summit here in jaipur at ikc rajputana in very important topic about positioning rajasthan as human capital factory <coughs> very very important topic for today on the gaias my old dear friend sri randeer vikram singh ji shri nareesh chakral ji uh, prabhat siddiqui um, pranash pe saab shri g k prabhu ji hp singh ji shri akhil bursai ji atul sharma ji yahan pe audience mein upasthit sabhi डिफरेंट एजुकेशन इंस्टीट्यूशन से आए हुए लोग और जो हमारे पार्टनर्स हैं इस्पॉन्सर्स हैं बहुत ही इंटरेस्टिंग सवेरे से एलिब्रेशन हो रहे हैं परांजपी साहब ने बुसराय साहब ने एच पी सिंह जी ने प्रभु जी ने बहुत ही इम्पोर्टेंट आस्पेक्ट आपके सामने उठाए और जैसा अभी ककराल साहब बता रहे थे कि राजस्थान की जो पॉपुलेशन है वो लगभग सात आठ करोड़ है पूरे देश में दस प्रतिशत भूभाग इस देश का राजस्थान में है और लगभग पाँच परसेंट पॉपुलेशन हम लोग यहाँ पे रहते हैं और इंडिया इट सेल्फ वर्ल्ड की सेवेंथ लार्जेस्ट कंट्री है फिफ्थ लार्जेस्ट इकोनॉमी है और जो हमारे नेचुरल रिसोर्सेज हैं जो एबेंजेंस में है राजस्थान में उनको अगर पूरी तरीके से कैप करना है तो उसके लिए ज़रूरी है जो हमारे ह्यूमन रिसोर्सेज हैं उनकी अच्छी ट्रेनिंग हो उनको अच्छा स्किल मिले हमारे देश में आबादी एक बहुत बड़ी समस्या है पिछले 45 साल में हम दुगने हो गए 140 करोड़ पहुंच गए 140 करोड़ लोगों की लिविंग कंडीशंस कैसे इम्प्रूव हो इसके ऊपर इंडस्ट्री बात कर रही है इसके ऊपर एजुकेशन वाले बात कर रहे हैं सबका मतलब क्या है कि जो इस देश में लोग रहते हैं अभी जापान की बात हो रही थी सिद्दीकी साहब बात कर रहे थे तो हमको कंपेयर करना पड़ेगा कि दुनिया की इकोनॉमी में जहाँ इंडिया की इकोनॉमी सबसे तेज़ी से बढ़ती हुई इकनॉमी से में से एक है बेखल एशिया में सबसे आगे चल रही आज की तारीख में चाइना से ऊपर है और अगर चाइना से ऊपर है तो दुनिया की सबसे तेज़ी से बढ़ती हुई इकनॉमी है ऐसे समय में एच आर स्किल्स को ह्यूमन रिसोर्सेज को कैसे सही ढंग से आगे बढ़ाया जाए एजुकेशन वाले अलग ढंग से सोचते हैं इंडस्ट्री वाले अलग ढंग से सोचते हैं ककराल साहब और हम जो सरकार में बैठे हुए हैं हम टोटलिटी में सोचते हैं कि पूरे प्रदेश में कैसे एम्प्लॉयमेंट जनरेशन हो कैसे बेरोजगारी ख़त्म हो कैसे इंडस्ट्री में अनरेस्ट नहीं रहे कैसे लोगों को बेटर कंडीशंस मिले और आपने पैंडमिक के समय देखा मैं हमेशा बोलता हूं कि राजस्थान में जैसा कोविड का मैनेजमेंट हुआ वैसा शायद किसी प्रदेश में नहीं हुआ क्योंकि अभी अतुल आपको बता रहे थे कि मैं भी इंडस्ट्री चलाता हूं फेडरेशन ऑफ राजस्थान एक्सपोर्ट का अध्यक्ष था तब तक मैं एक्सपोर्ट प्रमोशन काउंसिल का चेयरमैन नहीं बना था मैंने जब भी सरकार से मांग करी कि हमारी पैंडमिक के समय में इंडस्ट्री को चलाने का मौका मिलना चाहिए संजय सिंह जी यहाँ बैठे हुए हैं जे एम एन जू जी काउंसिल के राज्य सरकार ने तुरंत हमको परमिशन दी कि आप इंडस्ट्री चलाओ कोविड के नॉर्म्स का पालन करो और उसका असर हुआ कि राजस्थान ने 2020-21 से 2021-22 में 37 परसेंट का एक्सपोर्ट्स में ग्रोथ करा 
ये एक्सपोर्ट का ग्रोथ इतना बड़ा कैसे पहुंचा छियालीस हजार करोड़ से सत्तर हजार करोड़ का क्योंकि देर वॉज ए गुड मैनेजमेंट हमारे यहाँ से माइग्रेशन क्यों नहीं हुआ पूरे देश के अखबारों के अंदर टी चैनल के ऊपर एक चित्र आता था कि कोई बेटी अपने पिताजी को साइकिल पे बैठा के लेके जा रही है हजारों लाखों लोग पैदल ही जा रहे हैं बिहार की तरफ यूपी की तरफ क्योंकि उनका जो ध्यान रखा जाना चाहिए था वो ध्यान उस वक्त रखा नहीं गया वो स्थिति राजस्थान में देखने को नहीं मिली और उसके लिए राज्य सरकार बधाई की पात्र है मुख्यमंत्री जी और हमारी पूरी प्रशासनिक टीम कि राजस्थान में जो मैनेजमेंट हुआ एक भी व्यक्ति ऑक्सीजन की कमी से राजस्थान में नहीं मरा तो ये बताता है गुड गवर्नेंस मैं ये बात इसलिए बोल रहा हूँ कि किसी न किसी तरीके से ये आपके एचआर के ऊपर एक तैयारी बात हो रही थी कि आप अपने जो एम्प्लॉयज़ हैं उनको कैसे रिकेन करें एम्प्लॉयज़ को रिकेन करने के लिए अगर इंडस्ट्री को सरकार की हेल्प चाहिए तो सरकार का हाथ आगे बढ़ा हुआ रहना चाहिए उनको समय पर राशन मिले उस वक्त जब कोई तकलीफ हो हॉस्पिटल हॉस्पिटलाइजेशन चाहिए तो हॉस्पिटल मिले जब वैक्सीनेशन शुरू हो जाए तो आपके इंडस्ट्री में आके वैक्सीनेशन लगे तो आपका जो एम्प्लॉई चाहे किसी भी प्रदेश से आके राजस्थान में काम कर रहा हो तो वहाँ पे आपके पास रुकेगा अगर आप आज भरतपुर जो कि एक नेबरिंग डिस्ट्रिक्ट है यूपी मध्य प्रदेश से वहाँ जाके अस्पताल में पता करोगे तो 17-18 प्रतिशत लोग वहाँ पे आपको यूपी मध्य प्रदेश के मिलेंगे जो इलाज कराने आते हैं क्योंकि राजस्थान की जो मेडिकल की जो स्कीम्स हैं जो चिरंजीवी योजना है उसका लाभ उठाने के लिए हरियाणा से मध्य प्रदेश से उत्तर प्रदेश से लोग आते हैं और अगर ये पॉलिसीज ना हों तो जो इंडस्ट्री के हमारे कैप्टन बैठे हुए हैं उनको मालूम है कि उनके लिए भी एम्प्लॉयज़ को रोकना उनको सुविधा देना बड़ा मुश्किल हुए तो सरकार और उद्योग सरकार और एमएसएमई अभी कोई बोल रहा था कि मेरे ख्याल से बुसराई साहब बोल रहे थे कि राजस्थान में स्मॉल सेक्टर की इंडस्ट्री बहुत सारी हैं आपने बोला था शायद छः लाख छः लाख एमएसएमई इंडस्ट्री हैं एक लाख तैंतीस हज़ार से ज़्यादा रजिस्टर्ड एक्सपोर्टर्स हैं और वो सब के सब लोग एम्प्लॉयमेंट देते हैं मैं हमेशा कहता हूँ वैसे भी मैं स्मॉल इंडस्ट्रीज देख रहा हूँ कि बड़ी इंडस्ट्री का बड़ा महत्व है 2000 करोड़ की इंडस्ट्री का महत्व है लेकिन 2 करोड़ की 1000 इंडस्ट्री का और भी ज़्यादा महत्व है और जब 2-2 करोड़ की 1000 इंडस्ट्री लगेगी हर इंडस्ट्री में पच्चीस पचास सौ लोग काम करेंगे तो ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा लोगों को रोज़गार मिलेगा मेरे ख्याल से इस राजस्थान की इस प्रदेश की देश के सभी राज्यों की और इस देश की सबसे बड़ी आवश्यकता है कैसे युवा को रोजगार दिलाया जाए अभी ठकराल साहब बता रहे थे कि कितनी बड़ी संख्या के अंदर युवा हैं और इंजीनियर्स अगर आठ परसेंट उनको रोजगार मिलता है तो रोजगार को कैसे बढ़ाया जाए ये दोनों साथ साथ ही चलेंगे बहुत सही बात करी एचपी सिंह जी ने मैं बताना चाहता था कि 85 फाइव यूनिवर्सिटीज़ राजस्थान के अंदर हैं नाइन्टी में पहली बार अशोक गहलोत मुख्यमंत्री बने तो बहुत कम विश्वविद्यालय थे इस प्रदेश में लेकिन जो नई एजुकेशन पॉलिसी आई उनका जो सोच था पानी बचाओ बिजली बचाओ सबको पढ़ाओ और ख़ास तौर से तो आई आई टीज की बात हुई पॉलीटेक्निक्स की बात हुई हंगर के सिक्सटीन इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज हैं और बड़े नेशनल लेवल के यहाँ पे इंस्टीट्यूशंस हैं आई आई टी जोधपुर है निफ्ट जोधपुर एन एल यू जोधपुर एफ डी डी आई जोधपुर आई आई एम उदयपुर बिक्स पिलानी एम एन आई टी एल एन एम आई टी जब मैं राजस्थान फाउंडेशन का चेयरमैन था हम लोगों ने जमीन दी थी लक्ष्मी मित्तल जी ने यहाँ जयपुर के अंदर खोला इंस्टीट्यूट मुझे याद है प्रभु साहब यहाँ बैठे हुए हैं कि मुझे एक दिन भरत जैन आपके बोर्ड ऑफ डायरेक्टर्स में भरत जी वो मिल गए मैं अक्षय पात्र के फंक्शन में गया था उन्होंने मुझसे बोला कि हम राजस्थान में लंबे समय चक्कर लगा रहे हैं पिछली सरकार बड़ा सपोर्ट कर रही थी गहलोत साहब आए हैं हम यूनिवर्सिटी के लिए जगह देना चाहते हैं हमको जगह नहीं मिल रही तो मैंने कहा कि आप विश्वविद्यालय खोलना चाहते हो मैं उन मेरा परिचय नहीं था उनसे उन्होंने कहा मैं बेंगलोर रहता हूं और मैं मणिपाल ग्रुप के संग जुड़ा हुआ हूं मैंने कहा आप कब तक जयपुर में हो बोले मैं कल जाऊंगा आज बेस संग शाम को मुख्यमंत्री जी के पास चलो मैं उनको सीएम के पास लेके गया उनको पहले भी जानते थे उनको समय नहीं मिल रहा था 
बात हुई हमने बात करी और उन्होंने कहा कि मोहनदास पाई को हम लेके आना चाहते हैं जयपुर मैंने कहा आप बुला लो उनको दो दिन में मोहनदास पाई आए मेरे साथ मेरी गाड़ी में बैठ के भरत जैन गए मोहनदास पाई गए ये जो ज़मीन मणिपाल यूनिवर्सिटी मिली है वो मैंने उस वक्त उसी दिन एक ही दिन के अंदर निर्णय करके दिलवाई तो जो कमिटमेंट है मुख्यमंत्री जी का कि इंस्टीट्यूशंस ऑफ एक्सीलेंस राजस्थान के अंदर आने चाहिए अच्छी ह्यूमन पावर यहाँ से बननी चाहिए जो आपका टॉपिक है कि कैसे कैपिटल बदे कैसे फैक्ट्री बदे ह्यूमन रिसोर्सेज की ये इस तरीके से बन रही है राजस्थान जो परिवर्तित हो रहा है पिछले कुछ समय के अंदर उसका कारण ये है और उससे भी बड़ी बात ये है कि हमारे प्रदेश के अंदर गर्ल चाइल्ड के लिए महिला की एजुकेशन के लिए विशेष ध्यान दिया गया है और ये बात हो रही थी कि चार परसेंट की सी हैं स्वामी से जब पढ़ी लिखी यहाँ पे महिला होगी पढ़ी लिखी लड़कियाँ होंगी तो आने वाले समय के अंदर उनको निश्चित रूप से मौका मिलेगा आपने आपको मालूम होगा कि स्कूल के अंदर यहाँ लड़कियों के लिए एजुकेशन फ्री है कॉलेज में एजुकेशन फ्री है दस लाख तैंतीस हज़ार साइकिल्स टू हंड्रेड स्कूटीज और नाइन एट्टी सिक्स लैपटॉप्स अप्रैल टू ट्वेंटी टू तक इनमें डिस्ट्रीब्यूट करे गए थे तो जो आने वाला समय है उसके अंदर रोबोटिक्स हो साइबर फॉरेंसिक इंफॉर्मेशन हो आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस हो डेटा सर्विसेज हो इन सब के बारे में भी पॉलीटेक्निक्स के अंदर भी पढ़ाया जा रहा है और पढ़ाया जाएगा यहाँ पे अम्बेडकर लॉ यूनिवर्सिटी है हरिदेव जोशी यूनिवर्सिटी है फॉर जर्नलिज्म ये दोनों यूनिवर्सिटीज़ पिछली सरकार में बंद हो गई थी जिनको हमने दोबारा चालू करा और मेरे ख्याल से राजस्थान एकमात्र राज्य होगा जिसके अंदर दो स्किल यूनिवर्सिटीज़ हैं गवर्नमेंट की यूनिवर्सिटी भी है प्राइवेट सेक्टर के अंदर भी यूनिवर्सिटी है यहाँ पे तो जो मुख्यमंत्री जी का सोच है जो हम लोगों का सोच है वो यही है कि जब तक स्किल मैन पावर नहीं होगी तब तक हम आगे कहाँ बढ़ेंगे नरेश खकड़ा साहब का डिपार्टमेंट के स्किल एंड एम्प्लॉयमेंट का मैं उसके संग बहुत लंबे समय तक जुड़ा रहा हूँ क्योंकि मैं एन जो होते हैं नॉन रेजिडेंट राजस्थानी जो राजस्थान से बाहर रहते हैं इस देश में रहते हैं विदेश में रहते हैं उस विभाग को मैं संभालता था मुख्यमंत्री जी चेयरमैन थे मैं उसका वाइस चेयरमैन था जो यहाँ से बहुत सारे हमारे वर्कर्स हमारे कारीगर्स टेक्निकल व्यक्ति जाते हैं मिडिल ईस्ट में वो वहाँ जाके जो काम करते हैं उसके बिना शायद आज की तारीख में ना दुबई चल सकता है ना ओमान चल सकता है ना कतर चल सकता है परसों मेरी बात हो रही थी दुबई से डेलीगेशन आया हुआ था उनसे तो वहाँ पे मेरे ख्याल से जो अरब्स हैं वो फोर्टी परसेंट के और सिक्सटी परसेंट हिंदुस्तानी पाकिस्तानी और बांग्लादेश के लोग रहते हैं वो अगर यहाँ से ट्रेन रोके जाएं, उनको अगर कोई ट्रेनिंग दी जाए तीन महीने की छः महीने की साल भर की उनको थोड़ी सी जो उनके पास पहले से स्किल है उसको एनहेंस करके जाएँ तो उनको ज़्यादा अच्छी तनख्वाह मिल सकती है उनका ज़्यादा सम्मान हो सकता है उनको एक श्रमिक के रूप में नहीं देखा जाएगा अगर आप पढ़ के जाते हो तो आपकी एक अलग इज्जत होती है क्योंकि पहले एक ज़माने में कहा जाता था कि जिसके पास सरस्वती होती है उसके पास लक्ष्मी नहीं होती और जिस पर लक्ष्मी होती है उस पर सरस्वती नहीं होती इक्कीसवीं शताब्दी ने इसको बदल दिया जिसके पास सरस्वती है उसके पास ही लक्ष्मी है और ये बात चाहे बेंगलोर हो चाहे हैदराबाद हो और चाहे सिलिकन वैली हो और चाहे यू में रहने वाले इंजीनियर्स हों साइंटिस्ट हों या यूके में रहने वाले हेल्थ सर्विसेज में काम करने वाले डॉक्टर्स हों हिंदुस्तान के एक बात बताते हैं कि वो बड़े प्रतिष्ठित हैं बहुत अच्छी कमाई कर रहे हैं और उसका कारण क्या है क्योंकि नॉलेज इज़ पार और क्योंकि वो हिंदुस्तान से अच्छे इंस्टीट्यूशन से पढ़ के गए हैं और उसकी वजह से हिंदुस्तान का भी नाम बढ़ता है क्योंकि मैं एक्सपोर्टर हूँ आज से पैंतीस साल पहले जाता था मैं देखता था कि अमेरिकन इंडियंस को कैसे देखते हैं हांगकांग में चाइनीज़ इंडियंस को कैसे देखते हैं और पिछले 25 सालों के अंदर आप सब लोगों ने बदल दिया पूरी दुनिया को अब हिंदुस्तान की तरफ लोग देखते हैं आई वॉज ऑल्सो चेयरमैन इंडियो अमेरिकन चैम्बर ऑफ कॉमर्स में या एम्बेसडर से मिलने के लिए 15 साल पहले की बात है मैंने कहा कि यू वॉन्ट टू इन्वाइट यू टू जयपुर टू कम हैव ए सेशन बिकॉज आर पीपल वॉन्ट टू गो फॉर स्टडी फॉर बिजनेस इन यू एस ए दे आर फेसिंग प्रॉब्लम फॉर वीज़ा 
वी वुड लाइक टू डिस्कस अबाउट दैट उसने कहा मिस्टर अरोरा आई वुड लाइक टू ब्रिंग माई इंडस्ट्रीज फ्रॉम यू एस एंड वी वुड लाइक टू एक्सप्लोर द अपॉर्चुनिटीज इन राजस्थान तो हमको समझना चाहिए कि हम तो उनको वीज़ा लेने की बात कर रहे हैं और दुनिया की कंपनीज हिंदुस्तान आने की सोच रही हैं क्योंकि एवरी ईयर जो हमारे एक मिडिल क्लास से अपर मिडिल क्लास में जा रहे हैं अपर मिडिल क्लास से रिच क्लास में जा रहे हैं हमारी जो बाइंग कैपेसिटी बढ़ रही है जो इतना बड़ा कंजम्पशन का मार्केट है आज की तारीख में चाइना भी हिंदुस्तान को एक्सपोर्ट कर रहा है और यू भी हिंदुस्तान को एक्सपोर्ट कर रहा है तो फ्यूचर जो है अब लैंक ऑफ अपॉर्चुनिटी हिंदुस्तान बनने वाली है बन रही है इक्कीसवीं शताब्दी में बहुत ताकत हो सकती है आप जैसे यूथ के हाथ के अंदर आपको डिटर्मिनेशन की आवश्यकता है आपको मजबूती की आवश्यकता है आपको डिसिप्लिन की आवश्यकता है क्योंकि ये जापान की तरह हिंदुस्तान में क्यों नहीं हो सकता मुझे अभी बता रहे थे सिद्दीकी साहब कि उनमें इमोशनल बम जितना हमारे बीच में है उनके बीच में नहीं है तो ये तो हमारी एक ताकत है ये जो हमारी संवेदनशीलता है इसने हिंदुस्तान के अंदर जो पिछड़ा वर्ग है उसको ऊपर उठाने के लिए जो सरकार ने काम कर रही है दिन रात वो उसकी वजह से ही है क्योंकि मैं जिस विभाग में काम करता हूं और अभी हमने आपने सुना होगा कि इन्वेस्ट राजस्थान हमने अभी कुछ दिनों पहले करा और उसमें हमारे पहले फिक्की भी पार्टनर रहा है आई वॉज विद डैम इन दुबई वी गॉट इन्वेस्टमेंट फॉर फोर्टी करोड़ अतुल एट द टाइम और अभी यहाँ ग्यारह लाख करोड़ का इन्वेस्टमेंट के एम ओ साइन हुए तो जो दिख रहा है उससे मालूम पड़ता है कि राजस्थान की जो इंडस्ट्रियल पॉलिसी है एक इज़ वन ऑफ द बेस्ट इन द कंट्री इसमें कोई कहने की आवश्यकता ही नहीं है मुख्यमंत्री लघु उद्योग प्रोत्साहन योजना नाम सुनने में बड़ा डिफिकल्ट लगता है बड़ी आसान सी स्कीम है और आप उसका अगर उपयोग करो अपनी इंडस्ट्री शुरू करते हैं तो सौ आपको रिबेक मिलती है एस जी एस के अंदर जो स्केक जी एस का पार्क होता है उसमें रिबेक मिल रही है स्कैम ड्यूटी में छूट है मंगी ड्यूटी में सात साल की छूट है पीएफ ईएसआई उसके अंदर छूट है और हम लोगों ने एक योजना शुरू करी थी मिशन निर्यातक बनो निर्यातक बनो एक्सपोर्टर बनो जो लोग खुद अपनी इंडस्ट्री चलाते हैं इंडस्ट्री बनाते हैं वो खुद एक्सपोर्ट करना शुरू करें तो आठ से ज़्यादा लोग अभी नए निर्यातक बने इसके अलावा आप लोन लेते हैं तो लोन के ऊपर सब्सिडी मिलती है लोन के ऊपर सबवेंशन जिसको हम कहते हैं आठ परसेंट अगर रकम ज़्यादा हो पच्चीस लाख से ज़्यादा हो पाँच करोड़ तक हो तो छः परसेंट और दस करोड़ तक हो तो पाँच परसेंट आपने लोन लिया पच्चीस लाख का लोन लिया नौ परसेंट में आपने बैंक से लोन लिया आठ परसेंट सबवेंशन राजस्थान सरकार दे रही है तो वर्चुअली एक इंटरेस्ट के ऊपर आप अपनी इंडस्ट्री चलाएँगे ऐसी कई योजना सुनी है आपने किसी प्रदेश के अंदर ये राजस्थान के अंदर ये पॉसिबल है और इसलिए मैं कहता हूँ कि आने वाला जो समय है वो राजस्थान का है और हम सरकार में हो या हम सरकार में ना हो ये जो राजस्थान जो जोग्राफिकली जो हमारे सिचुएटेड है एक लैंड लॉक स्केक तो है लेकिन जो रेगिस्तान का इलाका था वो आज हमारे लिए ताकत बना हुआ है वहाँ पर रीन्यूबल एनर्जी आ रही है सौर एनर्जी आ रही है विंग एनर्जी आ रही है वहाँ पे गैस निकल रही है वहाँ पेट्रोलियम निकल रहा है और गैली मुंबई जो फ्रेक कॉरिडोर है गैली मुंबई इंडस्ट्रियल कॉरिडोर के संग में लंबे समय तक जुड़ा रहा उनतालीस चालीस परसेंट राजस्थान से होके जाता है तो जो दिल्ली में आदमी बैठा हुआ है जिसको बम्बई सामान भेजना है उसको राजस्थान से होकर जाना पड़ेगा और मैं ये भी आपको बताना चाहता हूँ कि क्योंकि राजस्थान स्मॉल इंडस्ट्रीज कॉरपोरेशन जो है वो लॉजिस्टिक फेस है राजस्थान सरकार का हम लोग यहाँ पर इनलैंड कंटेनर डिपो चलाते हैं एयर कार्गो कॉम्प्लेक्स चलाते हैं और बहुत ही जल्दी अभी जोधपुर के अंदर एक बड़ा इनलैंड कंटेनर डिपो जिससे अगर हम यहाँ से एक्सपोर्ट नहीं कर सकते हमारे पास बंदरगाह नहीं है तो जो एक्सपोर्ट कर रहे हैं हैंगी क्राफ्ट के एक्सपोर्ट कर रहे हैं मार्बल के एक्सपोर्टर्स हैं स्पाइसिस के एक्सपोर्टर्स हैं उनका सामान यहाँ से डबल डेकर ट्रेन के ऊपर कैसे जोधपुर से जा सके गुजरात मुंद्रा पोर्ट जा सके या बम्बई जा सके उसके लिए एक नया आईसीडी बन रहा है जोधपुर के अंदर एक नया आईसीडी बन रहा है बीकानेर में कुछ दिनों पहले मैं उदयपुर गया था अभी तक खाली हम जयपुर से एक्सपोर्ट करते थे एयर कार्गो से अब फ्यूचर के अंदर उदयपुर से भी वो काम शुरू होने वाला है और मुख्यमंत्री जी ने भी राजस्थान एक्सपोर्ट प्रमोशन काउंसिल बनने के बाद जो एक्सपोर्टर्स हैं अगर आप बाहर जाते हैं फेयर्स में पार्टिसिपेट करते हैं बाहर के बायर सेलर मीटिंग में पार्टिसिपेट करते हैं तो फिफ्टी परसेंट सब्सिडी अपनी तरफ से देने की घोषणा करी है तो आई एम श्योर दैट विद ऑल दीज न्यू मेजर्स 
we will be able to provide and generate better skilled manpower and to streamline them to make their contribution to the economy of the state and the country. Thank you very much for inviting me. Fikki Kisang Mera Lamba Association hai. It is one of the best organization working for business and industry. Pichle teen saal mein pandemic ke sabay ke andar jo activities band ho gayi thi, physical nahi ho sakti thi, virtual ho gayi thi. I also participated with them in different, you know, virtual meetings. Samay badal raha hai. Annual samay mein hybrid hoga. Ghabrani ki baat nahi hai. Aap 10 saal aage badh gaye us pandemic ke sang. हमेशा चैलेंज को अपॉर्चुनिटी की मानो जो काम अब जूम मीटिंग से होता है फ्यूचर के अंदर वर्चुअल भी होंगे फिजिकल भी होंगे और मेरे ख्याल से गवर्नेंस बेकर होएगी कभी और बैठेंगे मिलेंगे तब और लंबी बात करेंगे धन्यवाद थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू थैंक यू सर थैंक यू फॉर शेयरिंग द परस्पेक्टिव ऑफ गवर्नमेंट ऑफ राजस्थान एंड एनकरेजिंग वर्ड्स विद दिस वी come to towards the close of the session before i invite mr paranjpe to wrap up the session i would request uh, mr parveen paranjpe to uh, present mementos to all the speakers starting with shri rajiv aroda ji udhar se aao next mr naresh कुमार ठकराल मिस्टर प्रवांश पे नाउ रिक्वेस्ट टू प्रेजेंटेड टू मिस्टर नरेश कुमार ठकराल सेक्रेटरी स्किल्स नेक्स्ट टू डॉक्टर एच पी सिंह After that, to Mr. Siddiqui. To Mr. G.K. Prabhu. After Mr. Prabhu, to Dr. Busrai. And last, I would request our co-chairman uh, Randhir ji to present it to Mr. Paranjpe. And vice versa also, uh, Dimple. Also, no? <laughs> Thank you. Now I would request Mr. Paranjpe to wrap up the session. Over to you, sir.